Hi everyone, my name is Bree, and I'm very honored and excited to be here with you today. Some very special people at Wooga have given me the opportunity to play around with one of their islands, so let's have some fun. I'm going to share with you my symmetrical style and color techniques of decorating an island. Last but not least, I will show you how I piece a scene together. I've already put together a few scenes using a fall theme throughout, working symmetrically starting at the palace. I like to create pathways that will lead all the way around and through my island. I'm sure many of you have seen a picture of a color wheel. If you haven't, it's basically a circle of colors ranging from lightest to darkest. Contrasting colors are colors that are on direct opposite sides of each other on the color wheel, therefore making them complementary, or they naturally create the strongest contrast. For example, purple and yellow, or red and green. The prime use of contrasting colors is to direct a viewer's attention to a subject. Creating depth and height into a scene can be obtained with the use of trees, and in this case, mountains. Placing them behind and in front of Maggie's farm, I attempted to make this area appear to be down in a valley. I also used those same items to hide the brick walls on the island. The palace. You can't move it. It's stationary. You have two choices. You can decorate around it or block it off with other items. I like to decorate around it by first making a palace garden. By creating this space, it gives me a great location to change out some of the seasonal sets without tearing the rest of my island apart. For example, I can store this scene or sell most of it or distribute items to other parts of my island. Then I can create a carnival here or a wedding or a party theme like the New Year's set. When I'm done with those scenes, I can display my garden again. Moving on down, I connected my garden to the rest of my island by using just these little bridges in your main store. Over here, I put together a library and town hall and little park. When placing people into my scene, I try not to put them too close to any doors so that they appear to fit. The same with when I'm putting animals in a scene, I try to put the largest animals the furthest away from any doors. Over here at the villa, I created a small scene here, just packed in a row of trees in the front and in the back, keeping the symmetrical theme here. One, What I did to one side, I did to the other. This little piece here is from the wedding set. It has sand on the bottom, and I really don't want sand in my scene, but I do want the flowers. So I'm just gonna stick it at the back and cover it with the villa. Next over here in this scene, in this square, this is where we're gonna put together a cemetery memorial gardens. Beginning at the top, I've put a weeping willow here because I have a weeping willow on this side. Just something I do with the symmetry. I also put little purple verbena at that entrance, so I'm gonna do the same here. That'll probably be the only thing that will match the other side. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical on each side. These pieces here are from the Paris set, I believe. I love them. They're gorgeous. We're going to put them down here in front of this entrance as well. It's not really an entrance. It's the balcony. And we are going to incorporate that into our cemetery as a private place for our islanders to distribute the ashes of our dearly departed. If you've been playing Iris's Eyes, then you've probably restored vitality to this area, making Margaret's Memorial even more glamorous than it is. We're going to create a fountain garden down here at the front where I've put these four benches. This fountain is probably my favorite and I accidentally sold mine so I don't have it anymore. Boo-hoo. Anyway, using the purple verbena, we're going to pack in a lot of dark color around this fountain because we want the fountain to be where our view our viewers eyes go using some hollyhocks from the English garden set. We'll just place them on either side, two at the bottom and two at the top. Just like that. That's what that looks like without the fountain there. To close that off, I just chose these little cherub statues from the main store and put one at each end. Still giving a cemetery feel here. 
Not a creepy cemetery. Using the Peaceful Protector, we'll put another monument here. And the Graceful Ghost from the Halloween set. And what is Margaret's memorial without the ghost of Margaret herself? Next over here in the smaller square, I put a water feature on this side, so we're going to put a water feature on this side as well. I use the bench from the main store. In front of that, we're gonna put a little Wallace family plot together, but we're going to use this other fountain over here. This is what replaced the other Cupid fountain in the front. This is what is in your main store now. Wanting to draw attention to it, we're just gonna pack in some more color here using the purple flowers off of the gold wings of the Cupid on top and packing that dark color in around it really makes it stand out. In the front, I'm just going to take this little Japanese, little pink Japanese tree from the Japan set. I have them sprinkled all over my real island and place them there in the front just to kind of close that off. Now let's put that cemetery together. Just using four monuments. These are in the Halloween set. Just gonna place them just like that. And then this piece is from the Derby set, the horse track set. And my friend Delik from the Island Inspiration Group posted a scene last year where she put that Derby track over one of her tombstones there and it made a freshly dug grave look. Pearl and Iris are here because of course, Margaret's here. I want them to stand out in this scene so I'm just gonna place that grass behind them to really draw our viewers' attention into Pearl and Iris being at the cemetery. Top that off with just the Crooked Lantern from the Halloween set. It's starting to come together. Now let's put our buildings into the scene. They're kind of tonal in color, but very gorgeous. Let's give it up to the art team. This is my favorite set. I love every one of these buildings. There's no right or wrong way to arrange these. For our scene, we're just gonna arrange them like this, and I'm putting them beside and behind each other. And then this mausoleum, I will put at a diagonal right back behind that one. There we go. Now to make this stand out, we'll need to punch in some color. These shady shrubs, I highly suggest buying like 20 or 30 of these when, you, when they reappear again. I think they were in the English Garden set. They really start to bring this building into view. These Greek lanterns are in your main store. I don't really care for the bottoms of them, but I love the tops of them. So I'm going to hide the bottoms of them just at every corner. Whoops. At every corner of the building. I just placed one directly behind the back corner of each building. Gives a nice little soft glow to our cemetery. Using this yellow tree, I'm going to put it in front of the willow next to the purple flowers. This plum tree, I'm putting directly behind the building beside the lights. I'm going to use a yellow tree and put it directly behind the plum tree and another plum tree at the top of the yellow tree. Right there like that. Then going to close this off with some more shady shrubs. That dark green really pulls your eye in to the buildings. There's some bare spots back here. I don't like those, so I keep these beach blossoms on hand to fill in spots like that. I left a few empty spaces back here. Don't worry, we're gonna use those too. This is another item from the wedding set that has sand on the bottom. I don't want sand in my scene, so I'm gonna hide it behind that tree. And this Cupid, I'm going to hide the base of him behind this tree. And there you have it. There is our cemetery memorial garden. If you enjoyed these tips and tricks and would like to see more, 
please join me and many, many other talented decorators at Island Inspiration. We look forward to seeing you there. I would like to say thank you very much to the WUGA staff for helping make this possible today and to all of you for watching. Have fun, stay inspired, and good luck. Remember, color is a powerful tool and you can use it to express exactly what you want your scenes to say.